The Top 5 Issues of the 2024 Campaign Number 1. Open Borders This month, Joe Biden stated that our open southern border is the fault of Republicans in Congress. Mr. President, Donald Trump is ready to debate you right now. Do you accept? <laughs> Is that going to be on radio? What do you say immediately? Immediately? Yes. Mm -hmm. Will you debate I, him? If I him, I'd want to debate me too. The border, I've been asking since the first thing, first bill I introduced was on the border. We don't have enough agents, we don't have enough folks, we don't have enough judges, we don't have enough folks there. We need help. Why won't they give me the help all this time? And now they're starting about the, about the border. It's out of control. Well, guess what? Everything in that bipartisan bill gives me control, gives us control, without being, and still meets the needs of the people being able to come across, legally come across. We want to open avenues of legality and shut down the ones that are not coming through the points of entry. So there's a lot we can do. And the one thing I am disappointed in we didn't get done in the Senate piece was I think it's about time that we have all those young people who came and now dreamers. It's ridiculous. Can you imagine you're four years old, your mom says across the river, said, come on, leave me here. I don't want to go. Come on. What the hell is going on here? And they become contributing Americans and they're doing a good job and they're decent. It's about time we get a little, not only compassion, but a little brain, some brains in our head. Well, what are we doing? And by the way, I've asked for money for a machine to protect them. We have these machines. The problem for Joe Biden is that on his first day of office, he canceled all of Donald Trump's border initiatives. U.S. President Joe Biden signed half a dozen executive orders on Wednesday, reversing several of former President Donald Trump's hardline immigration policies. Just hours after his inauguration, Biden also sent an immigration bill to Congress that proposes opening a path to citizenship for an estimated 11 million immigrants without legal status. The executive actions include immediate lifting of a travel ban on 13 mostly Muslim and African countries and halting construction of the U.S.-Mexico border wall. They come as thousands of Central Americans have been on the move in recent weeks, some aiming to arrive at the U.S. border after Biden's inauguration. Biden has also directed the Department of Homeland Security and the U.S. Attorney General to preserve the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program which protects migrants who came to the country as children from deportation. Biden also issued a memo calling for a 100-day pause on some deportations. He also ended new enrollments in a controversial Trump program known as the Migrant Protection Protocols, which forced more than 65,000 asylum seekers back to Mexico to wait for U.S. court hearings. But it did not specify what will happen to those currently enrolled, many of whom have been stuck for months in squalid tent camps near the border. The actions show that Biden is beginning his presidency with a sharp focus on immigration, just as Trump kept the issue at the center of his policy agenda, albeit from a radically different perspective. President Biden also attacked his own employees from the Border Patrol for doing their jobs. All right, well, border agents who were accused of whipping migrants will not face criminal charges. Do you remember these images taken last September? Well, the Biden administration, including the president himself and the press secretary, condemned those agents, accused them of mistreatment based on this footage. But it turns out, after investigation, they weren't brandishing whips or deploying them against people. Those are reins used for controlling horses. But guess what? Now that no criminal wrongdoing has been found, we're not seeing a whole lot of corrections from the administration or, frankly, the media. Dana, this, what do you think? Well, when this happened last year, I was just horrified. Right? I, was, I have a family that uh, uses horses and horseback in order to do their jobs. It was clear from the beginning that they were not whipping any migrants. This investigation was slow walked by the administration, and they, all of these agents deserve an apology. They've been on desk duty since this happened. And he also campaigned as a candidate for refugees to swarm the border. They heard him loud and clear. 
whether they were seeking safety or not. I would, in fact, make sure that there is, we immediately surge to the border. All those people are seeking asylum. They deserve to be heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. Joe Biden said that he cannot do anything about border security as long as there are Republicans in Congress. This is not leadership. These are excuses. The president has all the power he needs to secure the border, but has failed to do so. This implies Biden wants an open border for future votes. Donald Trump has pledged to close the border and deport those who entered illegally. A nation without a border will have no wages and no labor unions, something that pro-democrat labor unions should understand. Open borders also means illegal children are still required to be educated at public expense. This means larger classrooms and less individual attention for your child from their teachers. Number 2. Foreign Wars On November 10, 2021, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and President Joe Biden signed a military and economic treaty with Ukraine. The treaty promised to reaffirm the importance of our relationship as friends and strategic partners based both on our shared values and common interests, including a commitment to a Europe that is whole, free, democratic, and at peace. Most notably, it promised to emphasize unwavering commitment to Ukraine's sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders, including Crimea, and extending to its territorial waters in the face of ongoing Russian aggression, which threatens regional peace and stability and undermines the global rules-based order. Russia read the agreement and viewed it as an act of war. Despite repeated phone calls between Joe Biden and Vladimir Putin, which are secret and not available to the public, Russia invaded Ukraine three months later. Biden's sole attempt at negotiation has been to call for Putin's removal from power. will never be a victory for Russia, for free people refused to live in a world of hopelessness and darkness. We will have a different future, a brighter future, rooted in democracy and principles, hope and light, of decency and dignity, of freedom and possibilities. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. Biden's policy seems to be of reaction rather than action. Donald Trump has promised to keep America out of avoidable foreign wars, and the first step is to send Anthony Blinken and Joe Biden into retirement. Number 3. The Economy Joe Biden crushed the American economy by getting into a war with Russia. An absence of leadership has profound effects on the world stage. Joe Biden blamed American corporations and Vladimir Putin for the bad economy. I understand inflation is a real challenge to American families. Today's inflation report confirmed what Americans already know. Putin's price hike is hitting America hard. Gas prices at the pump, energy and food prices account for half of the monthly price increases since May. Biden's Treasury Department has also printed large amounts of money, which has driven inflation to record levels. Fair to say you simply flooded the system with money. Yes, we did. That's another way to think about it. We did. Where does it come from? Do you just print it? We print it digitally. So we, you know, we, as a central bank, we have the ability to create money uh, digitally. And we do that by buying treasury bills or, or bonds or other government guaranteed securities. And that, that actually increases the money supply. We also print actual currency and we distribute that through the Federal Reserve Banks. Number four, the president's enfeeblement. Department of Justice, Special Prosecutor Robert Herr, detailed in his official government report, his multiple interviews conducted with Biden at Biden's beach house. Her observed the following. 
Our investigation uncovered evidence that President Biden willfully retained and disclosed classified materials after his vice presidency when he was a private citizen, and Mr. Biden knew the passages were classified and intended to share classified information. Mr. Biden's lapses in attention and vigilance demonstrate why former officials should not keep classified materials unsecured at home and read them aloud to others. Her then documented why the Department of Justice issued Biden this extraordinary pardon from future prosecution. We have also considered that, at trial, Mr. Biden would likely present himself to a jury, as he did during our interview of him, as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. Based on our direct interactions with and observations of him, he is someone for whom many jurors will want to identify reasonable doubt. It would be difficult to convince a jury that they should convict him, by then a former president well into his 80s, of a serious felony that requires a mental state of willfulness. When asked about his obvious frailties, Biden was defensive. Mr. President, for months Mr. when you were asked about your age, you would respond with the words, watch me. Watch Many me. American people have been watching and they have expressed concerns about your age. That is they, your judgment. They, that is your is judgment. To public that is not the judgment concerns. of the press. They express concerns about your mental acuity. They say that you are too old. Mr. President, in December, you told me that you believe there are many other Democrats who could defeat Donald Trump. So why does it have to be you now? What, what is your answer to that question? I'm the most qualified person in this country to be president of the United States and finish the job I started. Number five, why did the candidates run for office? First, Donald Trump. Together, we will be taking on the most corrupt forces and entrenched interests imaginable. Our country is in a horrible state. We're in grave trouble. This is not a task for a politician or a conventional candidate. This is a task for a great movement that embodies the courage, confidence, and the spirit of the American people. This is a movement. This is not for any one individual. This is a job for tens of millions of proud people working together from all across the land and from all walks of life, young and old, black and white, Hispanic and Asian, many of whom we have brought together for the very, very first time. Second, giving a 2022 speech in Brussels, Joe Biden explained why he ran for president. I wasn't going to run again, and I mean that sincerely. I had no intention of running for president again. And uh, until I saw those folks coming out of the fields in Virginia carrying torches and carrying Nazi banners and literally singing the same vile rhyme that they used in Germany in, in the early 20s, or 30s, I should say. And, um, and then when the gentleman you mentioned was asked what he thought, and a young woman was killed, a protester, and he asked, was asked what he thought, uh, he said, there are very good people on both sides. And that's when I decided I wasn't going to be quiet any longer. He said that in 2017, Donald Trump had praised the killer of the Charlottesville protester, Heather Heyer. This is not true, and it's easy to disprove. Two questions. Was this terrorism, and can you tell us how you're feeling about your chief strategist? Well, I think the driver of the car is a disgrace to himself, his family, and this country. And that is, you can call it terrorism, you can call it murder, you can call it whatever you want. I would just call it as the fastest one to come up with a good verdict. That's what I'd call it. Because there is a question, is it murder, is it terrorism? And then you get into legal semantics. The driver of the car is a murderer. And what he did was a horrible, horrible, inexcusable thing. Biden lied. Trump never said what Biden believes he said. And then when the gentleman you mentioned was asked what he thought, and a young woman was killed, a protester, 
And uh, he asked, was asked what he thought. Uh, he said, they're very good people on both sides. And this was easy for Joe Biden to verify, but he has never even tried. Go ahead. Do you think that the, what you call the alt-left is the same as neo-Nazis? Oh, those people, all of those people, excuse me, I've condemned neo-Nazis. I've condemned many different groups, but not all of those people were neo-Nazis, believe me. Not all of those people were white supremacists by any stretch. Those people were also there because they wanted to protest the taking down of a statue, Robert E. Lee. So, excuse me, and you take a look at some of the groups and you see, and you know it if you were honest reporters, which in many cases you're not, but many of those people were there to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. So, this week it's Robert E. Lee. I noticed that Stonewall Jackson's coming down. I wonder, is it George Washington next week? And is it Thomas Jefferson the week after? You know, you, all, you really do have to ask yourself, where does it stop? Joe Biden lives in an alternate reality that only exists in his mind. And he governs the nation in this manner to this day. This election, vote your conscience. Thank you.